All right, good morning, guys. We got some, uh, how do I say this? We got some new old stuff, some new, new stuff, and a whole lot of finagle to make it work. Let me show you what we got. All right, first things first, I took a little four hour road trip up to London, Kentucky yesterday and picked up this beauty. This is what they call a 10 foot offset disc. This is a brush hog brand. And basically the reason we got this disc is kind of for twofold. One, this is what a lot of construction sites use to dry up a site. So if we ever get onto a pond or a big site that's muddy, which we've been in that situation before, it'd be nice to have this around. You get the dirt turned up, you get the dirt turned up, the more surface area that's exposed to the sun and the wind and it dries out a whole lot faster. Long story short, this thing is not made to finish anything. It's just really made to tear up the ground and get it broke up. The other reason we got it is for this job right here. We're down here on the abandoned farm project. In theory, what we've done in the past, the neighbor's got one of these we borrowed. We should be able to go through there and run it on this and it'll help break up a lot of those uh, small sticks and saplings we cut down. And the more we can get them broke up this fall, the better chance they're going to be not a nuisance in the spring whenever Chris goes to plant. So we've, uh, like I said, uh, Chris and I have borrowed one from the neighbor a few times, which we greatly appreciate. But this is one of those pieces of equipment you're a little bit abusive on. You hate to borrow because you end up fixing it and you feel bad about it. So uh, stumbled across this one on Facebook market side. Uh, Chris and I went halfers on it because uh, he's going to use it as much as I am and uh, pretty happy with the purchase. These things are uh, ridiculously expensive. And I was a little bit worried about how cheap they had this one listed, but uh, after getting it up up there and looking it over, I'm uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. All the main stuff, as far as the bearings and the disc and the frames not busted up, it could probably use a tire too. But I'm not sure how much we're going to take it down the road. But you can definitely tell the previous owner has uh, owned a grease gun. I'm guessing. I'm just going to guess by the amount of grease on this thing. It probably come off a construction site and not a farm. I could be wrong, could be wrong. Don't crucify me if you're a farmer. But uh, construction guys seem to like their grease guns a little bit more than farmers. That's just my hunch. But all the scrapers are still on. It's, uh, I'm uh, pretty pleased with the purchase so far. Now, the issue we got is, I don't have nothing to pull it. <laughs> this thing requires auxiliary hydraulics with a cylinder right there. I do have one small tractor with auxiliary hydraulics, which we may go get and hook up just to make sure everything works. Uh, it come from an auction company. I'm assuming they pulled the pin out of it for some reason for transport. I don't know for sure what's going on there, but we'll get that figured out one way or another. And uh, may put a hitch. I do have auxiliary hydraulics on the 850B. No, back up, 850J. Uh, we may put a hitch on the ripper and pull it with a J whenever we need to, because the, uh, like in this situation down here, those tracks will also help break up all those sticks and little stobble and stuff out there. But long story short, we need to get this thing off the trailer and uh, go down. I don't think we need this lane in the middle of the yard. Like a flat tire or an issue getting ready to happen. Let's get this unloaded off the trailer. Let's go down to the yard. I'll show you uh, the other thing we got. I am really super excited about, but we gotta do some finagling to make it work at all, work also. So let's get this unloaded. We'll go down and pick that up, probably grab our little tractor, just so we can make sure everything works. And then uh, we're off to the races. I don't have my work truck with all the proper lifting chains in it and stuff we normally use, but I'm thinking we can do some fancy loopy loopies here. And this thing is heavy by design to keep it down the ground. All those four inch square tubes are not tubes, they're solid, uh, solid steel. So, all right, let's get it rigged. We got, we got some pretty shady rigging going on. Let's see if it works, I guess.
good deal. That is officially unloaded safely. This little tractor over here, the 955, does not have auxiliary remotes on it to run the hydraulics on that. The 855 down at the lot, which is just over the hill, does. I like to move that tractor up here anyways. Neither one of those tractors are going to pull that disc, obviously. I guess we can try. It's probably not going to go far. Uh, but I at least hook it up and get the uh, hydraulics hooked up, make sure everything works, make sure we don't have a blown cylinder or bad hose or anything. So if we do go to use this thing, we know it's 100% ready to go. And down at the lot is the other goodie that showed up yesterday. I haven't even seen it yet. We're going to see it for the first time together. Let's go check it out. All right. Captain Kleeman was actually nice enough to pick this up for me the other day while he was coming home from shift. And uh, Chris and a few of the other guys unloaded it because they needed the trailer. So this is my first time laying eyes on this thing. But check out that beauty. We got us an AMI Axis tilt bucket powered by Ram Cam. This is, uh, if you guys are wondering, this is definitely very similar to the newer bucket that Chris has. I went with a slightly smaller size. His is 66 inch, I believe. Mine is 60 inch. I did that because we end up with a lot of tighter spots and sometimes it's nicer to get around with that. And uh, I think the machine would have handled either one just fine. But we gotta do some fancy plumbing and some um, configuring a little bit. Let's get this loaded on the trailer. Let's get the tractor loaded on the trailer and get them down to the property, which is just on the other side of the hill over there. And uh, we'll see if we can get get worked up Tilt all the way. There we go. All right, let's set the bucket on here and we'll head back over there. With a little bit of luck, my forks are too wide for the pallet and I'm too lazy to get out. I'm gonna see if I can just grab it right there on that pin. Well, we got it, now it's just not dropping. That's not a very, that's not a very well balanced level. We're not going far. We're literally going around the corner. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, I promise. All right, let's go get it unloaded. We are slowly, slowly getting stuff moved from this location to the other location. The plan is um, a lot of the stuff we don't use a lot, like the power washer, the straw blower, the cedar, the rollers, these little tractors. Uh, the ruckus rake, grapple bucket, uh, tile cart, stuff like that. We're going to move down to the new property and go ahead and get it stored inside and uh, take advantage of that indoor space down there. The stuff we use on a regular basis, uh, like the loader and a lot of the attachments for the excavators and uh, the equipment that comes and goes, like the dozer sitting here now, we will probably leave at this location. 
Um, trucks will probably stay at this location. And uh, I guess some of the equipment, maybe an 850B, we don't use as much. May end up down at the other side. I don't know where Lieutenant Dan's gonna end up at yet. It's kind of a kind of a work in progress, but we're still gonna use both locations. That's one thing that's super convenient about the place we bought. It is literally just right around the corner. Even driving the loader back and forth, it's like three or four minutes. Uh, that's less than a, it's right out a minute with the truck, I guess. But we'll figure it out. We'll sort it out as we go. All right, we're almost there. We'll pull in and get unloaded. Made it. Man, it's supposed to be another absolutely gorgeous day. We are, uh, what are we? We're early November right now. We're filming this, and we've got some amazing weather for early November. Had a cold snap there and a wet snap. It's supposed to get wet again next week, but right now, it's awesome. All right, I'm just gonna take the excavator and a chain. We got a little, uh, I don't have a knife on me to cut those. I don't wanna clip that in on the trailer as I gotta push that out a little bit. Long story short, I'm just gonna take the excavator and the chain. We'll set it off there. If we switch trucks, we'll have uh, tools to deal with that. Let's get her off. This one should be easy to unload. We'll just use the key in these fancy pedals. When you go to Ohio, you pick up a disc that don't quite fit between the fenders on this trailer. It's a little bit of pain in the butt. And man, this trailer for hauling the uh, mini excavator, the skid steer, these little tractors, the rollers, I love that thing. That is, uh, that has been one awesome trailer. It really has been. All right, I'm gonna get this unhooked. I'm gonna go unhook that trailer. I'm gonna switch trucks. And we'll come back and see if we get some of this stuff operational. All right, truck swap, and we are back. So. This tractor here has got this auxiliary hydraulics on. This is an aftermarket dealio I built uh, years ago for, I don't know where I built it for, dump trailer. Used to have a power rack, used it for something. I built it for something, but anyways, it should allow us to use, run the hydraulic cylinder on this so we can raise it up, move it, and kind of check and see if everything's working. So let's get these fittings cleaned up, get them plugged in, see what we got. Well, that went pretty smooth now we got that hooked up hoping i can suck this cylinder in enough to get this pin back in down there so you guys you guys scream really loud whenever i'm lined up just perfect because i don't think i can see it from up there now 
a little bit of luck, we should be able to raise this thing up. Uh oh. issue my friends that needs to be flipped up all right let me redo this let's try that basically they got a gap right here so their wheels can kind of float and then once it hits that it should raise it up but they got a bolt in there keeping it from going too far let's see what happens take two Now what? We're hitting the bolt? Or do we just not have enough tractor to lift it? Should go. All right, here's what I think is going on. Kind of seeing how that works. We got enough cylinder stroke there. I don't think it's a disc problem. I think it's a tractor problem. I bought this valve because it's got a built-in relief in it. I got that relief set to run that vibratory roller attachment I got, which is around 1500 PSI. The tractor will do like 2600, which I don't think is enough to lift that up. So I think if we swing over, we grab that with the machine, take some weight off of it. We should be able to get those wheels down where we can at least move it around. Normal tractor, obviously this tractor is not going to pull a disc. Normal tractor pull it fine, but uh, at least like to get it over there to the thunder trailer get it greased make sure everything on it's operational and uh make sure we don't have any surprises so whenever we need it we got it so let's see if we can do a little finagling here all right let's get this thing a little uppity uppity and see what she does hopefully to put the wheels down and we'll set it back down. Let's see what happens. There we go. They got these set in there as stops. I'm assuming they knew what they were doing. When they set those, let's set this back down. See what it looks like. Perfect. I believe she's off the ground. Enough we can at least grease it. said this was a good idea the uh front gang on the disc is dragging a little bit because the tractor tongue height is not high enough and i'm thinking we might need to adjust this pin here to get a little more height of it out out of it eventually but for now for now it'll work all right i'm gonna fire up thunder go around give this thing a good grease and check all the bearings in it and then we'll park her up
Well guys, all in all, this thing checks out really good. All the bearings seem to be good. That scraping noise you hear is these bud scrapers right there, so that's nothing to be concerned of. That one right there has got just a little bit of a play in it, but they all took grease and it's not enough to really concern me. Everything else looks pretty good on it. I think this cylinder here might be on its last leg. Looks like somebody's overextended at some point. Got just a little bit of a tweak to it, but that's a pretty cheap uh, generic piece. So if that's all that's wrong with this thing, we're gonna be in pretty good shape. Tires don't look nothing special. This thing's probably never gonna go down the highway. It's just gonna be in the field, but amazingly enough, all of them are holding air. So that's pretty doggone impressive. Now, as bad of idea as what this is, I've got an even worse idea. It's actually a horrible idea, but I think we're gonna try it anyways. Ground conditions are not gonna get much better than what they are right now to try this thing out and see if it's gonna work just to kind of make sure we got a game plan. Think about taking this thing over here, raising the wheels up with the tractor, unhooking from it. And we got a little case dozer over it. It's got a hitch on the ripper and maybe just make it around, around the field and seeing what it does. I think the case dozer will pull it. The tractor is definitely not gonna pull it. It's a bad idea, but let's do it anyways. All right, here we go. that lineup job it's like it's meant to be flawless plan except my keeper don't quite fit right look at that lineup job it's like it's meant to be all right i got the hoses zip tied up so they don't do anything goofy i think we're going to be able to run with the rippers in they may just kind of skim the ground We'll see what happens. I don't know if this dozer is going to pull it. It should. I ain't going to pull it very fast. I think it'll at least pull it. Let's see, uh, see what happens here. You guys ready for all the excitement? Hopefully there's no excitement. All right. Forward engaged. Oh, we're doing disky things. Look at that.
get up here on a little flatter ground. See what kind of job we're doing. The little dozer is actually pulling it really well. I just noticed this ain't a horrible deal here either. I got those drippers just kind of skimming the ground and it's grabbing a lot of the big stuff and uh, taking it along with us. But this is kind of what we're wanting to see. It's just breaking this stuff up. See how it's kind of broke and uh, mixing it in with the ground. It seems to be cutting. It seems to be cutting pretty good. Almost got that bigger one severed. See it right there? A lot of the little stuff is breaking up nicely. I got a couple passes on this. It might just do the trick. She's cutting pretty good. Question is, what are we gonna do with the build up of sticks when we get too many? I can't raise it up to turn it, so we're gonna make big sleeping turns. Keep going. That actually works surprisingly well. The dozer pulls are fine. It's just a little bit on the uh, slow side compared to what a tractor would be, but we'll, uh, we'll borrow one of those from Chris someday and knock this out pretty quick. I think there's, I need to measure this off, but I think on this side of the road, there's about 12 acres right here. So it'll take a little bit, but we'll get her done. And uh, the main thing is it seems to work fine. And it's gonna do the job we need it to do. So that's, that's definitely a plus. All right. We need to get back over here and figure out if we can figure out how to get this uh, tilt bucket plumbed up. I got some big ideas, but that don't mean they're gonna work. All right, I guess first thing we need to do is make sure that this thing fits on the machine itself. Oh, looks like it's going, dude. Look at that. Well, that was the easy part. Now we gotta figure out how to get the twilty, twisty turny. I guess it ain't the twisty, the tilty section working. That's gonna be a little more difficult. When we get too carried away trying to hook this thing up, this bucket here is actually quite a bit different than most till buckets out there. And the big, big difference about it is, as you notice, there is no cylinders or no hoses or anything like that exposed right here. Everything's tucked away nice and neat, and that's made possible by their Ram Cam uh, setup. When we went up and did the factory tour, they actually had one of these laid out on the benches and shows all the pieces and parts of it. But so basically, there's a cylinder buried deep down inside here that is serviceable. And it runs a cam system that tilts this, which allows to suck the bucket up closer to the coupler, uh, which helps a lot of your breakout force and stuff. And it also helps uh, keeping all your hoses and everything. That's the problem with these tilt buckets. I got the same problem with my other one. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. A lot of stuff's out here and exposed where it can get damaged. Uh, with this setup here, everything's tucked away nice and neat and uh, nothing's really accessible to get damaged. The other thing that I really like they do is since everything's kind of tucked away nice and neat, look at this. They put you a beautiful little grease bank back here. Got a nice little thing around it protecting it. Most of the time these things are not used in rough applications. It's more of a grading and finishing scenario, but you still end up bumping into stuff and uh, causing issues and hooking hoses on stuff. and. All that good stuff. So this is a very similar to the newer tilt bucket that uh, Chris has. Uh, he also has one of the older style. It still has the 
uh, cylinders mounted on the outside. And this one here, I believe, tilts to 45 degrees. So uh, we got one we run on the 120 quite a bit. That's the SRS bucket. And uh, looking forward to having this one for the 220, 220, 210. So that way we'll kind of have an option for either one. And we got a couple ditch jobs coming up this winter. So this should be, should be a pretty nice solution. So here's what I want to do a little different on this machine versus the 120 is I want to install a hydraulic selector valve. So basically we do not have to disconnect the thumb to hook up the tilt bucket. We can just select uh, a different setting and it'll have, so basically this is the input. Thumb will stay hard plumbed into that one and then we'll have a quick connect on this one for whatever attachments we run in the future. What I've got to figure out is we don't have a whole lot of room right here to do what we need to do before we get into the thumb. So we're gonna have to get creative with some fittings and make sure we can work within the box we got. Uh, this is from Summit Hydraulics, not sponsored by them. It looked like a really nice high quality piece for a fairly reasonable price. So I picked it up, a little cheaper option than some of the other ones. I was a little worried about this thing getting damaged being delicate out here, but all the electronics uh, and all the grease hoses, which are pretty delicate, probably more delicate than this, have not got damaged over the course of the last year and a half or two years I've owned this thing. We've done a lot of clearing and uh, random stuff. So hoping this thing will hold in there just the same. All right, let me let this down. It's a little closer to ground level and uh, we'll get a game plan on what we're gonna do. So here's gonna be the question mark. We need to obviously get from that to that. I think I can take this loose and use it to spin this on there so we don't have to have an extra joint in there for a swivel. Uh, I'm gonna hard plumb this back in right there, going up to the thumb, and then uh, we'll get a six foot hose coming over for this with our connector on it. I got some pictures, I got a list, let's, uh, Head to the hydraulic shop and see what we can come up with. We have made it back to the shop. I'll kind of show you what my layout here is and what my thought process is. So these are all the fittings and pieces and parts we made. This is the inlet on the top. So we got these two fittings here to uh, adapter to go into the top of the valve and then this will go into the block on the excavator. And then once they come out the other side, the thumb is going to continue to be what I'm gonna call hard plumbed in. So I got an adapter to go into there. The 90 for the thumb will go on in and go on out. And then we'll put a quick attach on this one. I'm gonna put it at a 45, because in my head, as that comes down in 45s, it'll give us a little better shot going back to the, a um, little better shot going back to the tilt bucket or the attachments. For some reason, we don't like that. This is a nipple here. We'll just take that 45 off and go in straight. So long story short, we got options and then we got to do it twice. So I figured I'd come up here to the shop, get everything Teflon taped up, get as much stuff together as I can before we go down there. I also got the hoses in the truck. My question is, I have no swivels to go from the top of these valve blocks to the valve block on the machine, which we may have to take those Allen screws loose, pull it away to get this twisted on there to uh, make it work. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's get this done. Well, that went together fairly smooth. I ended up got to, th got to thinking, I cannot talk today, got to thinking 
I got these 45s faced their own direction and I left the coupler off because I'm pretty sure that's going to interfere with the boom whenever we're going to spin those on. That's even if we miss it all together. So I think we went as far as we can here in the shop. I'm going to grab a few wrenches. We got a few pieces and parts. Let's go down, cross our fingers, and hope this fits. I got this valve turned off so we don't leak a bunch of oil out of the machine. I got the thumb sitting on the ground so it's kind of in a neutral position. We'll probably lose a little bit of oil out of here if I had to guess, but I'm hoping it's not a whole lot. And then we're gonna hope, hope and hope and hope and hope this thing threads right on there without having to do a whole bunch of fancy stuff. It's gonna leak a whole lot, so that's good. Well, that went pretty easy. All right, pull this out of there. Oh my goodness, who put that in there? Holy snipes. <laughs> all right i am back i had to go up to the shop to get these two fittings apart and it was even a booger up there i had to use the air, air hammer and every trick in the book and possibly even some uh, hydraulic power and an 850j sitting in the shop but we finally got them separated we're gonna put these this goes back into here so let's hope that valve body screws on there it's gonna be close folks it is gonna be close I had to get that fitting apart because it's some really goofy thread that threads into that valve block. All right, we're not gonna over tighten that for sure. Here we go, moment of truth. This thing will make a full circle like we're on the home stretch. Come on, baby. Oh, oh, I think it's gonna do it. I think it's gonna do it. Got this fitting tight, this fitting to that fitting tight. Those are O-ring fit. So they're gonna kind of dead out. This here is pipe threads. I'm hoping I left just enough so we can turn this around the way we want it. Oh yes, that is beautiful. Now, hopefully this will go back on here It'll basically have our thumb hard plumbed back in. That looks really good. All of our clearances look good. Find a wrench for that. Hose is back on for the thumb. Last thing I need to do is put the quick connect on this side. Should thread right up on there. And you guys remember what size wrench that is? Engine three eighths, in case you're wondering. I like how I got this fancy little hose holder here. That'll kind of keep everything nice and tidy close to the bucket. Make sure that O-ring's in there. I 
Got the old hand wrench on this one. Come on, baby. I'm gonna go with the uh, multi-purpose one here. All right. All I do is one-handed. We'll get her connected there. Oh, it's gonna go. Perfect. All right, so the way this should work with that lever in that position, the hydraulic oil is gonna come through here, blocked off to this side. It'll come through here, flow through here. Thumb should work normal. It's all hard wired in because we're hard piped in because we're not planning on redoing it. I wanna go and use the thumb or whatever's hooked to the auxiliary right here. We'll flip that lever over, hook onto that, and it runs on down. I'm hoping my hose is long enough with the bucket curled in the other position. Usually it's the same about both ways as it pivots on the bucket pin. I think we'll be good. That, thought about putting a few mounting bolts in here to mount this off to that, but that'd really screw me on be able to get it on and off. And that being pipe thread, if it gets hit hard enough, I think it's got the ability to turn just a little bit to relieve some pressure. So we're gonna run with that, see what happens, but I think that looks pretty nice, neat, and tidy. Should, uh, should serve the purpose. I guess I need to turn. Okay, it's back on. I forgot. Turn our valve back on. Let's get the other side done. We'll fire up the machine. See if this works. You guys can probably notice it is getting dark but that side plumbed up very nice i got this side set to thumb i got that side set to thumb let's fire this thing up real quick and uh see if it's gonna work before it gets too dark what do you guys say all right moment of truth put a little bit of a light on the subject out there thumb function burn that little bit of oil off there my thumb actually matches up with that bucket halfway decent let's go flip the switches see if we got some tilty tilty guess they're not switches they're more like valves One. A little bit easier if I put this a little bit lower. All right. Let's see if we got some tilty tilty. Here we go. Oh yeah. Look at that. Dog, baby. All right, since it's getting dark, we're gonna pick this back up in the morning and uh, go out there and give her a try and see how she works. Good morning, guys. Hopefully y'all had a good night's sleep. I sure did. We are back down here. I went ahead this morning and uh, checked everything for leaks in the daylight. I think we're in pretty good shape there. Went ahead and give everything a shot of grease, including the excavator. It was, uh, it was a little past due. She needed some uh, needed some love, but everything is checking out. Everything looks everything looks good. I think it's time to uh, I think it's time to go knock the paint off the cut edge and see what this thing's got. You guys will see down here in a minute after it got dark last night. 
I ended up uh, working for about an hour or two with the uh, little 750 and the disc. It makes really good progress. I figured out a trick. I let the blade down, let it skip the ground, and grab a lot of the bigger stuff. And the disc was chewing up all the small stuff we left behind, which I ended up with some of these uh, windrows here on the edge of the field. But uh, it was working really, really good. So what I got in mind, down here with this field transitions off to the road. I want to make that where it's easy to brush off and easy to maintain. Right now it's a little bit of a steep bank. This should be just a ticket. We're going to throw that dirt back up in the field and we'll take a dozer and kind of level it out later. But give this thing a good test run before we haul it out to the job tomorrow and make sure we got all the bugs worked out. Here's a little better view of what I was talking about with the dozer. You guys can see when you get a little bit of that stuff underneath your blade, just kind of skims the ground and uh, grabs a lot of that stuff. And we'll be able to pick this up, load it in the uh, dump truck. Then you come back behind it, the disc was doing a really good job of breaking all this stuff up into uh, small pieces where it should should break down pretty easy. So it's gonna take a little bit, like a couple hours to get this done with the dozer and the uh, disc. But I think if we make our pass across there do this and Chris can come in here with this big tillage tool and I think we'll end up having a pretty decent field for next year better than what I thought so all right back to the task at hand for now this is what I was kind of talking about I don't know if you guys can kind of see what has happened is there was a fence down through here for years 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 40 years 50 years maybe even longer and at some time they stopped using this as pasture and they started tilling it and every time they tilled it they kind of made so the field comes across I'm exaggerating here the field comes across Got a little bit of a hump and then it goes down the ditch. And what's that's causing in a few places, we hold a little bit of water right here and we get this goopy little transition where it's hard to uh, mow or finish. So what we'd like to be able to do is plant reasonably close to the ditch and then what little bit's left, run a lawnmower or something down there once or twice a year just to kind of keep everything knocked down. So let's take this tilt bucket, see how it works. We're just gonna take this dirt, pick it up and uh, launch it back there in the field. We're not gonna worry about getting this like perfect because if we get the majority of it back we'll bring the dozer down here and bust everything out and the sun's coming out it's going to be another beautiful day folks all right let's uh let's knock some more paint off also went in the monitor and adjusted my uh auxiliary hydraulics and i don't know if you guys can tell but look how nice and smooth that is that is way smoother than the other one now keep in mind part of that majority of that's the difference in machines a little bit of a difference in the buckets that uh, ram cam system definitely a little bit tighter but first game first she goes that's all we're wanting to be right there we're not going to get too aggressive with this I gotta find a few of those stumps down through there, but that's all right, part of it. Nice.
this bucket is working absolutely awesome it is definitely going to be one handy tool to have in the toolbox from here going forward for sure need to clean up my mess i made with all the uh hydraulic oil we leak but other than that i think we're good to go Well guys, it took me a little bit over an hour and a half and I actually made it the majority of the way down the highway here getting that all pulled back. It's about a thousand feet down through here. See behind me, I didn't get too carried away with cleaning it up real nice. I just wanted to get it back far enough. We'll run the dozer down through here, polish it off. Keep in mind this is a field, nobody's front yard. There's definitely a good little test for the uh, AMI tilt bucket. Can I get the, uh, get a little bit of the, uh, get what am i trying to say here get the hang of running it kind of get the controls familiarized a little bit i think that's what i'm trying to say i don't even know it's been a long couple days to be honest with you but the bucket works awesome it is super smooth digs really nice i have no complaints this machine in this bucket mostly because of the programmable monitor and the way this ram cam works with a lot less uh, points for slop it is uh it is slick it is really slick it's definitely going to be an awesome tool in the toolbox for sure but that's gonna be into this video guys i got to uh, get this machine loaded up we need to ship down the road to a different job we got a lot of other cool and exciting things coming for sure but disc work good bucket works good valving works good so i got all my leaks fixed i think we're uh, i think we're on the right track so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did as always big old thumbs up definitely helps the channel and we appreciate that and uh, go on, make sure you don't miss out on what's coming up next. Consider subscribing. That way we can catch you on the next one. Later, guys.